final heat is at hand here at Madison, and they will go five laps rather than three. And let's see how some of the drivers feel about it in this horrible heat. Hopefully, by maybe the beginning of the fourth lap, whoever has the lead, I think, will start backpedaling a little bit. Three laps, so you, you just go hard all three because there's really no time to uh, take care of save the equipment. Five-lap race, maybe there's a little more time. You can be a little more gentle on the equipment. We finally got a break. It's the first time in four years we made a final in Madison. You might know, uh, apparently, we're not going to get the power. Our carburetor is uh, taking a big dump on us. Everyone's going to have to drive a little harder, uh, but at the same time, you have to be conservative. You know, and you say, well, gee, that, that sounds like it's going against each other, but uh, it's not. You, you have to drive as hard as you can and still maintain your equipment and, uh, and your body, especially. Well, now we've got the race set up back in the boat, so we're just hoping that everything, all the adjustments that we made are all the correct adjustments, and uh, we're going to give it our best and try and get to Joe Ritchie in first place. And everyone's going to put their killer whammy combination in the boat and uh, go for broke. You know, it doesn't make any difference to me if we finish, uh, you know, last or second. I mean, I want to win or, or nothing else. So we're just going to go for everything that we have to put into the deal, and I'm sure that the other fellows are going to do the same. So here again are the drivers, Todd Yarling in his first final in Madison in four years. Tom Deeth in his first final this year. Last time we saw him was in Seattle of 85. Scott Pierce with maybe the killer whammy set up in the Budweiser Griffin. Jim Kropfeld in the Budweiser Turbine now to challenge the next man, that being Chip Hanauer and the Miller American. All five boats are running for this five-lap final. The first heat today where we have gone the distance of five laps, something the drivers are more accustomed to. And here they come down the main straight away, ready to start. The 7-11 was the alternate boat. It will pull onto the infield. And here we go for the start, the final of the Budweiser Indiana Governor's Cup. Bernie Little with two boats in the final as they go into the first turn. The Joe Ritchie Spirit of America with a great start. Tom Deeth, the driver there, as he holds on to lane number two. The Budweiser Griffin in lane number one as they come out of the turn and go down the choppy backstretch here on the Ohio River. The 1986 Budweiser Indiana Governor's Cup. And Tom Deeth has given it all. You saw the Budweiser Griffin. On, Scotty, Third place is the Middle American. Stand on it. Get on the front. Let's go. The Bud Griffin crew chief trying to fire up his driver, Scotty Pierce. Miller crew watching for the pits. And that's the Griffin on the right. The Joe Ritchie Spirit of America on the left as they come into the second turn at lap number one under the bridge. And now they hang on the skid fin as they try to turn as well as possible and as tightly as possible. Look at that, all four boats coming into the turn. That is hydroplane racing, a gorgeous shot. Bud Griffin, Joe Ritchie, Miller, and the Bud Turbin. Coming down the main straightaway now past the bridge. Sometimes you wonder if they ever get around the piling to those bridges. As you can see, one of the boats even went outside of the piling. I think it was possibly the Bud Turbine. Here's the Miller American, Bernie Little, trying to keep one of his Bud boats out in front. Don't think he likes what he sees right now. Ooh, the Bud Turbine flying into that turn. Let's see who comes out of this turn now in first place. Looks like the Miller American going out wide. The Bud Griffin on the inside. Yes, it is. Chip Hanauer going after his 20th career victory has taken over first place, going down the back straightaway. The speeds for the first lap rather slow, 117, 116. But now the Miller American beginning to pick it up close to 130 miles per hour as the Miller American beginning to take charge with Chip Hanauer aboard. This is one of the best turning boats in the business. It seems almost oblivious to choppy water. It showed us that in Detroit. That's the Cellular One of Louisville that the Middle American is about to go around now. Todd Yarling getting to his first final heat in Madison in four years. But the Middle American in control and going at a lap speed of better than 130 miles per hour. First place, Middle American, Chip Hanauer. The two beer boats going for second and third. Fourth place, Spirit of America, and back to the Middle American. If Hanauer should indeed get a victory today, as I said earlier, he would join a very elite group. Bill Muncy and Dean Chenoweth, the only drivers ever to win more than 20 races. Of course, Muncy, 62. Chenoweth, 25 races. And now, Chip Hanauer, a chance to win number 20. The Bud Griffin beginning to slow down a little bit. Scott Pierce trying to keep the Griffin engine going. He's in third place. And again, Chip Hanauer. 
as the skid fin does its job made of solid aluminum and holds the boat into the lane as it comes around the turn and heads down the straightaway again. He won the Gold Cup a week ago. He had his problems in Miami about three weeks ago, but now has a chance to win his second straight race of 1986. Second place, Jim Crockwell, beginning to knock on the door now in the Budweiser Turban. Third place, the Budweiser Griffin and Scott Pierce. Hanauer now 32 years of age. Five straight Gold Cups, the defending world champion from 1985. Jim Crockbell, the world champion in 1984 in the old Budweiser that came out before. This Budweiser Griffin on the left, as you see Scott Pierce going around, the sailor one of Louisville, and Todd Garling aboard. Five laps on this final. After each boat ran at least three times in the preliminary heats, but only three laps each time. The Bud Griffin clapping the sailor one of Louisville. And Chip Hanauer, everything going his way. The Miller American team on a roll as they go after their second straight victory. Listen how quiet it is when he's out there alone. Oh, look at Jim Crockfeld getting everything he can out of this boat as he pushes the Miller American, hoping that possibly Hanauer could break and Crockfeld could pick up the victory. Third place going to the Budweiser Griffin, Scotty Pierce. And they'll take the boat back to Seattle. We'll see it again in Tri-Cities in about three weeks. The Miller American coming down the main straightaway in front of better than 100,000 fans coming in from Cincinnati, Louisville, much of Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, the tri-state area to watch unlimited dodge of plane racing as you see Jim Cropwell getting way up on the left spots and going into the first turn. The Ohio River not kind to that boat or any of the boats for that matter. Look at the choppy water out there. Two, three, four foot rollers. And it's all racing choppiness. It's not from the weather. It's just plain from the boats. The Joe Ritchie Spirit of America hanging on to fourth place. Fifth place to say to one of Louisville. Under the bridge, Chip Hanauer out of Seattle, Washington, about to get his second straight checkered flag, his second straight win in 1986. The Miller American winner of the Budweiser Indiana Governor's Cup. Second place, Jim Crockfeld of the Bud Turpin, still the national point leader, by the way, despite not winning. The celebration continues at the Miller American camp. So a perfect day comes to an end for the Miller American team. Four races, four first places, and 1,600 points. And getting ever so close to the Budweiser Turban, the national points leader so far. The Bud Griffin, third place. Joe Ritchie, Spirit of America. Great start by Tom Deeth. And the Cellular One, Louisville, with 802 points today. Let's hear from the winner, Chip Hanauer. Well, Chip, the last two heats, uh, you had races in both. This one, you had to battle the Griffins at the start and then the double buds at one point. Yeah, they were throwing some stuff at me together there at the start. Uh, they were ganging up on the one-minute gun. Made it real hard. But uh, I knew the boat could take care of everybody except for maybe Jim. And uh, I just wanted to key on him, make sure I had him covered. So it worked out great. This is one of those where it's a good thing it was five laps, though, as opposed to the three laps you were running earlier in the day. You actually needed them. Yeah. Um, I think three laps would never be good for a final. You know, it just, uh, I think a final should reward good driving and a well-prepared boat. You need five laps to, I think, show all that stuff. This is getting boring. I mean, it was so matter of fact today. You guys are the only guys that seem to be relaxing in this heat. I'm glad you think it was a matter of fact, because, <laughs> you know, I don't know. It never gets any easier. Maybe it's because I'm getting older, but uh, I don't know. Every final heat just takes a big toll on me. Chip Hanauer, the winner here. Congratulations. Thanks. Good Back to you, Don. A final comment from Madison, Indiana, after this. One world championship, five gold cups, seven national titles, Miss Budweiser and the King of Beers, the winningest team in hydroplane racing. fans this bud's for you Diana, a final comment and an impression from our newest member of the broadcast team Lou Gellos Don my thoughts really don't center on the final heat itself but the three previous heats uh, three laps apiece a new format being tried by the URC and it proved to be successful uh, the last heat 3b 
even had a lead change, even though it was uh, only three laps. And the interesting thing about that is it kept the boats closer, kept the prospect of an actual race more intact than when these boats get stretched out over five laps. I think it'll be interesting to see if they don't adopt this same format in later races through the circuit. And as Chip Hanauer celebrates, by the way, lap two on that final heat, 130.2 miles per hour, a new course record. Final comment from Jim Hendrick. Well, so the Budweiser Indiana Governor's Cup is now history. And I guess what's more important besides fast speeds and good competition, which is important, is the fact that it was a safe race. All the drivers are here, and I'll head down to Evansville, Indiana, for the fourth race of 1986. That's about the story from here, Don. And as Jim put it so aptly, we have very little time before the next race. We go on to Evansville, and we'll be there for you. For Jim Henrik and Lou Gellos, I'm Don Poyer. Thanks for joining us, and so long. Air travel is provided by Continental Airlines, the official carriers of the Unlimited Racing Commission. Shoes and sports apparel is provided by Avia, the high-performance athletic footwear for both men and women. This has been the Budweiser Indiana Governor's Cup. Brought to you by Enco, the best wiper blade you can buy. Test prove it. If you'd like to purchase a 1986 media guide, Send a check or money order for $6 to the Unlimited Racing Commission, 901 Occidental South, Seattle, 98134.